Well, I never really used dating apps in Brazil, to be honest. I came here, uh, the women that I dealt with on a casual basis were more like cold approaches or people that I met through friends. Like my girl, I met her at a restaurant and just cold approached. You know what I mean? So and here we are two years later after I met her with a baby on the way. Um, but the dating apps definitely go crazy. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and if you're looking for something more serious, I recommend Bumble. You like the same way they do in the States. It's like the, the girls who are more into looking for a relationship are on that app. And if you're looking for something a little bit more casual, you know what I'm saying? Tinder might be your, your go to there. So uh, I think um, if you're in Rio or let's say Salvador, like you can use day naps, but there's so many women walking around that are just super friendly to talk to. You don't really need a date. Like all you need to do is go outside. Right. You know, that's, just, all, that's go the beauty the just go to the beach and walk around. It really just don't go to, the beach is the spot. The beach yeah. is a, if you live in a uh, well, I wouldn't say that about all places in Brazil that have beaches because when I went to his Cifa, it was dead on a Friday mm -hmm. uh, versus Salvador, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. It's three, four hundred people at the beach at one beach out of three or four every single day. Wow. Yeah. So uh, but Salvador and Rio beach culture is yes, yes, it's its own point over there. So um, we already asked the next one. Have you ever done like an interracial relationship in Brazil? No, not in Brazil. In Colombia, I did. Uh, there was a chick that I was dating, uh, you know, the white Colombian chick. Yeah, I'm going to uh, leave those memories and try to lock those back in. She she was nice, man. She, she was definitely a good girl. But I had already made up in my mind that I was moving to Rio. So that's why that didn't work out. So would you say that it was, was it perceived well by the public there in Colombia? Oh yeah, nobody cared. Yeah, nobody cared, I, I don't think so either. Yeah. Okay, so are there, any, are there any noticeable preferences or trends amongst Brazilian women? You already said that they, do you believe that Brazilian women in general prefer white men? Some of them some of them but like for example my girl she she's never dated a white man and never will she's like i like black men and that's it you know what i mean and i meet a lot of brazilian women like that but i also meet some that are like yo i, I exclusively date white guys but i feel like in brazil those women are the minority the ones who say they only date white guys they're definitely the minority wow okay so what what do you think a, a brazilian woman preferences not talking about race but like let's say physical attraction like what are they like uh it depends on which part of Brazil, because brazil is such a big country right like the south versus the north versus like the section near the amazon and now it's in the west where it's bordering the other countries on the west side they all have different cultures they have different slang different food and in a it's the same way in colombia like the costeños talk completely different from the paisas have different foods uh so i think a lot of those aspects of the culture are regional um so it's, it's kind of hard to nail it down to have this one monolithic view of what all women want but i will say from what i've noticed here in rio like because of the beach culture, because of the workout culture here, they don't want you to be sloppy. Don't think you about to come off the plane, 300 pounds and yo, I'm gonna kill it because my passport is blue. Don't work like that. So I think they definitely want you to uh, just not be sloppy. Um, they don't necessarily want you to be like the, the pretty boy. You don't gotta be like Chris Brown, you know what I'm saying? But you gotta, maintain your appearance and look presentable um I, i've even had a woman for example in colombia tell me she was like oh my my man don't need to be pretty i'm pretty for the both of us i was like damn wow never heard that before you know what i mean so that threw me for a loop so i think they want you to be relatively attractive uh relatively in shape um they do like height everywhere but your height won't disqualify you you know what i mean I'm six seven, so you know my experience with that is is going to be different from everybody else's for sure. Uh, but I do notice that women tend to gravitate towards the taller guys, and you don't have to be rich, but you have to have enough money to be able to just take her out on dates. And she's not asking for five star restaurants, bro. You could take her to the bodega and go get you a five dollar meal, and she cool. So I think that 
the dating standards in Brazil are a lot less, a lot more relaxed than in the States where you got to be six, seven, fuck like a champ and, you know, drive a Maserati and make 200 K. You got to be a God. Yeah, pretty much. Basically you got to be a God. Uh, so somebody asked a question and they said, uh, well, let me ask you this too, before we do this, do you think tattoos help in Brazil? I see a lot of women with tattoos. So the, the women like tattoos too. I don't think that's something that'll disqualify you for sure. So you think they like age? Do they, do they like the age? Yeah. yeah. They like that age, but it doesn't have to be like, I'm, I'm part of this organized crime age. They just like that he got some personality to him or he, he's got a little edge. Well, that's what helps you out. If you come to Brazil and you're a black man and you're dealing with women that typically like black men, they tend to gravitate towards us more because of that age. They're like, oh, shit, look at the way he dressed, you know, his swag, like um, the American hip hop music that they like. I'm not telling you to come down here and be a pookie, but I'm saying just be yourself. And if you have a little bit of edge to you, women gravitate towards that. So, Agreed. Agreed. So, uh, Urban City Hiking asks, Rico, I know you're new to Brazil for a year, but in your opinion, what is the best city to buy a home? Man, that's tough because uh, now I've been to quite a few cities in Brazil, mostly down here near Rio. So I've been to Sao Paulo. I've been, you know, of course, I live in Rio, uh, Cabo Frio, Ohio de Cabo, Gramado, um, Porto Alegre, Chuy, which is right on the border between Brazil and Uruguay. Uh, to be honest with you, I would say if it's about saving money, anywhere outside of Rio, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Anywhere, Rio's like relatively expensive, but I know the cheat code because I've been living here and I live in a neighborhood, which I won't disclose on this live because I'm not trying to blow it up, but it's by the beach, uh, it's super cheap. You know, my first apartment here in Rio, I was paying $400 a month for a two bedroom apartment and I was a three to five minute walk from the beach. You know what I mean? I see land for sale in this same area that I live in where you could get you a decent sized plot of land for like ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000. I haven't seen a plot of land for sale for more than thirty grand. I know a guy, the guy who helped me find my first apartment is a real estate agent and his dad owns a construction company. I'm in talks with him right now about, you know, putting some stuff in motion to try to like buy some land and build a home here. And he was telling me, yo, you could build you like a decent three bedroom, two bathroom house with all concrete construction for like 20, 30 grand. I see condos for sale out here, beachfront for like 100 grand. You know what I mean? So the best city is going to depend on your budget, like how much are you willing to spend and what's your vibe? Right. Because not everybody likes Rio. Some people like Florianopolis. Some people like the south of Brazil better. I know a lot of people that like the north of Brazil better. So I would advise you to just come take a trip, try out different cities and see which one, you know, you gravitate towards. But in terms of prices, you can't go wrong. It's, it's going to be way cheaper than the states anywhere you go. Yeah. Yeah. I would agree with you. Uh, I don't know what neighborhood you're in, but if, in Copacabana, yeah, if you want a beachfront, like I can throw a rock in the sand if you know there's just one little street separating us that's going to start at like 1500 a month you say right yep that's which accurate. is cheap because that's almost what i was paying in dallas and i was in a it, just in the city no beach nearby but uh it's expensive for being abroad you know it, it's expensive for being abroad but yeah so my next question for you is what is the communication style like in Brazil, would you say that they have a very romantic way of communicating with you in a relationship? Compare, let's compare it to the state. Let's compare the romanticism in Brazil compared to the United States. Oh uh, yeah, man, uh, it's 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 on ten out here. You know, like um, if you're dating a woman, she's gonna text you. She's gonna call you a more. You know what I mean? She's going to ask you, hey, have you eaten today? Like, what have you eaten? Like, dude, I'm in a whole nother country. And you texted me like, have I eaten today? Because they really give a damn. Yep. You know what I mean? So I, I think that the culture, like, um, you know, what the, the hallmark of femininity, this is a quote from Rico, yo. the hallmark of femininity is vulnerability. So a woman who is not, who doesn't have the ability to rest in her vulnerability 
can't be feminine. And I feel like these women here are super, super feminine, bro. They don't mind being vulnerable and open with you, uh, showing affection, displaying their feelings. They're not going to come with this hard exterior in the shell and tell you, you know, get your get your hammer and nail and 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 open up this hard case in order to get the real me. They they present that up front. Yeah, that's that's very that that logic that they got in the states. Like, oh, you know, I'm because I love to make this comparison. They say, well, we have to be around the right man to be feminine. So let let me flip your logic. I'll be feminine until I get around a white right woman, then I'll start behaving like a man. Right. See, that sounds fucking crazy. <laughs> that sounds crazy. Yeah, but, I'm gonna uh, I'm just be a bitch until you prove otherwise. Like who yeah. says? You know what I mean? Whenever we're both behaving like bitches, then I'll start getting more solid. That that's what'll happen. I'll switch it. I'll turn into a man when I feel like it. Uh Cod God's uh, big Washington sent five dollars for I have two thousand in the bank and I feel like I don't have enough for a visit. You have enough for a visit and a risky visit. You can get no, you actually you don't have enough for a visit. Because a round trip ticket for me from Texas was fifteen hundred dollars. So five hundred dollars, it you're not you can you can get maybe two nights at a Airbnb and then uh you can penny pinch. So I would say you you when I travel, if I was traveling without a savings account, I would have at least enough money to get back home which is usually around $1,500, no matter where you're at in the world, one way, $1,500. And then uh, you need the entire trip to Brazil would cost you like 3,000. So I would have at least 5,000 to my name because nice. you're going to spend 1,500 on a plane ticket. If you stay a week, you might spend $400 on the Airbnb. So that's already almost two grand. Luckily it's cheap. So you could probably survive off of $500 a week there. So yeah, you uh, at least have five grand first. So Dude, no, you don't have to go visit. That's the problem though, because when you see how cheap everything is, you come down here like, oh, the bottle is only eighty dollars tonight at the club. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, and, and that should have get you because you just like swiping. Oh, this is so cheap. This is so. And then by the end of the trip, you're like, damn, how much did I spend? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. This is and why I feel sorry for y'all, y'all boys from Texas, man, because in Florida, that's like a gateway to everywhere in South. We, I want to say a round trip flight from Miami might be between eight hundred to a thousand. Mhm, mm mhm. Mm a round trip because I remember a one way buying the ticket the day before was six hundred dollars from Rio to, to Miami. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it, it wouldn't have been that way from Texas uh, last minute trip, which means if I would have bought it in advance, it probably would have only been like three hundred bucks. Yeah. So 